Okay, uh, we're very happy to have our uh, founder of MOPA to here to speak on the lattice problem for models of PA. Uh, go ahead, Roman. Okay, uh, thank you, Atar, and thank you all for uh, showing up here. Uh, this is, you know, I, I meant this talk uh, as a continuation of a series of talks that I um, already gave uh, two years ago and last year, sort of after this conference at Cornell that we had two years ago, I think almost exactly two years ago, when I invited uh, Ken and Laurie to give talks about the history of the subject, and uh, they gave uh, wonderful talks, and then we had them at MOPA as well. But also, once while they were giving those talks, you know, it was clear that there is so much that uh, that one can still talk about in terms of you know what has been done and what still perhaps needs to be done. That uh, I'm filling those gaps now, uh, slowly, step by step. And this is this lattice problem for models of PA. It's a big topic, and I will uh, say much about the history of it and also um, some of its uh, uh, quite recent developments. And so the details, I'll, 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 I'll get to that. In a moment, there's plenty of stuff. There are, there are slides with definitions and, uh, and, and, and some very specific results. So I, my plan is to go over everything slowly. And slides do not have everything. The slides will be just a base for me to talk about something. And um, but the talk really is the talk. The talking part is, is probably more important than this one on the slides. And if I start talking too fast, or it, you know, if I mumble too much, then, then let me know and I'll slow down. Okay, and uh, I will, most likely I will continue next week because there, there, is, there is much, much material, unless by some chance I will finish everything today. So let, let's see how it goes. And please do ask questions. Okay, now something happens. Okay, so just so some preliminary slides just to um, establish some terminology and remind you about about some basic facts about models of PA. So uh, much will be based on constructions using column closures. And so what are those column closures? Well, you have the you have a uh, column terms. Uh, PA has this uh, wonderful feature of the presence of definable column terms, the minimum elements of definable sets with parameters, so for every formula. And you know, I don't need to use uh, strings of parameters, uh, uh, strings of variables because of coding. So typically we'll be just uh, formulas in one free variable or two free variables, and uh, column terms pick the smallest element of, of, uh, of a set defined by, by a given formula. I take all of them, and then uh, the column closure of a subset of, of the domain. And again, the convention will be that there is this, um, this is actually the gym uses all the time, that the, the, uh, the calligraphic M's will be models of PA. And then if you go, go to Roman type, then those, those will denote the domains. So this column closure of a domain, you just, you just close, you, you, you just take the image of the domain under all the column functions. And that's, Unlike in some other theories, it's enough to form elementary submodels. If you take a, a subset of a, of a domain of a structure, a model of PA, and you take its column closure in one step, uh, you, you create an elementary substructure. And that would be crucial. That is actually, you know, this, this wonderful feature that PA has. So now what about, what about lattices? So uh, for a given uh, model of PA, uh, we can consider the set of its uh, elementary substructures, uh, and it's uh, partially ordered. This is the um, elementary uh, substructure or elementary extension order. Or if we already have one model and we have its elementary extension, then you can look at the interstructure lattice. This is all the elementary sub. Oh, I, I do it all the time now in this in this with this preview. Sometimes I will touch my mouse and then it moves to the next page unnecessarily, I'll try to be careful. And, we, and uh, so, this, uh, so this is the interstructure lattice of, of, of elementary extensions of M that are some models of, of N. So, you know, so we could just talk about this other thing, interstructure, because the lattice uh, itself is uh, of, of elementary substructure of the model is the lattice of all the substructures between N and this column closure zero. There's the minimal elementary submodel of the of M, and it is a lattice, and we we we, we will be jumping from the uh, ordered partially ordered set 
to the algebraic setup when you have uh, joins and meets, and the join of two submodels is the uh, the meat of uh, I always confuse them. The meat of two models is just the intersection, and because of the presence of these column functions, this intersection is always an elementary substructure. And the join uh, is the column closure of the union of the domains of the model. And a particular feature, not every lattice can be a lattice of uh, elementary substructure, it has to be complete because those operations are valid for any set of, uh, you, look, you can form joins and meets of any sets of elements of the lattice, you take the intersection of any collection of uh, elementary submodels, and here you take this column closure of any union of elementary subclosures. So those are. The, the, that makes those lattices complete. So what is the problem? Uh, the problem is, and this was, and maybe Jim remembers, I actually did not read it anywhere, who first asked this question, but the, the problem uh, caught some attention in the 1970s, uh, and it's which lattices can be represented in as uh, interstructural lattices for models of PA? I, don't Jim, know. I, would, I would guess it was Heim. But it's, it's certainly in Heim's paper, and, and and maybe this is right because Heim's <laughs> paper. I will talk more about Heim's papers later. But paper later, it was published in 1976, but the results of the paper uh, were already published in an extended abstract, the AMS notices or IMS or abstracts of the uh, math reviews uh, in 1965. So it's <laughs> probably there was probably nothing earlier than nothing earlier than than. <clears throat> So as I said here that in the 70s and the 80s, much was done by Geifman himself, Julian Knight, George Mills, uh, Jeff Paris, Jim, uh, and Alex Wilkie. And I will uh, say a little bit of what those results were. But, you know, and also thinking about it today, you know, 1970s, which is 50 years ago, so it's plenty of time. But much of the research stopped in the, the end of 1980s. But there was one person who continued, and that's Jim. <laughs> And and he's continuing to this day, coming up, you know, with one or two papers a year or so, uh, and and the discipline lives. And you know, part of you know, uh, now Atar and I are writing a survey, um, and we write and write and write, and it will not be fully comprehensive survey because there is so much to cover. But part of the part of our effort is to somehow perhaps rekindle interest in in the problem itself, and in some some evaluation of what has been done so far. All right, so what is very important in this whole discipline is uh, Geifman splitting theorem. Again, these are like early days of model theory of PA. What, 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 is, the, what is the Geifman uh, spl splitting theorem? You know, the extensions, elementary extensions come into categories, or actually three categories. An extension can be cofinal if, the, if all the new elements are somewhere in between the old elements. Uh, an extension can be an end extension. Uh, which means the only uh, elements that are added are the elements above the ground model. Well, and then the third category would be mixed, a little bit of one and a little bit of the other. And those really very rarely occur as a special category. And that's partly because of uh, Geifman's splitting theorem. It's, it's, it's actually something in, very easy to prove, but it was an important observation that any elementary extension splits into a unique cofinal extension and then the, ex the, the extension of this cofinal extension as an end extension. So, so, so this is how typically models are constructed. One can first do the cofinal extension and then co continue with an end extension. And sometimes it's also convenient to do the end extension first and then cofinal extension and then amalgamate uh, what you get to get a, a model that that's results as, as a mixed extension. So. Why is the theorem here um, uh, on the slide when I introduce the lattice problem? Well, it's it's here uh, because this whole discipline, as you will see, uh, well, is based on ways of constructing uh, for a given model M, an elementary extension N uh, with a prescribed uh, interstructure lattice. And the cases of end extensions and cofinal extensions are really distinct because different methods apply. That sort of there are different techniques, different technologies, and I will try to, um, to show you some examples examples of that. So a little bit about definable ultra power. So this is the basic tool for constructing elementary extension is by defining by by a, a sort of uh, an ultra power construction that's that's restricted to 
uh, the, the two ultra filters on definable subsets of a model. And definable, I always mean definable with parameters. So here, if there are sets, uh, sets definable over a model M, I will call them M definable. What well, it means, you know, I have that we, that that uh, formulas have parameters from the from the domain. So the, the the way things works over countable models is that you, you know, I'm afraid to touch, you know, it would be nice. I'm afraid to touch my pointer here. <laughs> anyway, but but the, the, this is this is the whole technique that if you somehow manage to to define a an a nest infinite countable sequence of uh, non-empty definable sets. Uh, and in the process, you make sure that for every definable set, every de de definable set um, or its complement extends one of uh, one of these. Uh, then the sequence already determines um, a complete type, a type with uh, this is language of arithmetic with parameters from the domain. You just look at those formulas uh, which define a superset of one of those sets in your in your sequence. And because it's a nested sequence of uh, non-empty uh, subsets, uh, this shows that it's a, um, it's a consistent type. And because on the way we decide which formula goes into the type, or either the formula goes to the type or its complement, it's a complete type. So it's a complete type consistent with the theory of the model, with all the parameters. So there is a well-defined uh, the unique up to isomorphisms elementary extension. So that's why it's sort of M of P. So the type is realized in some elementary extension of the model by some element A. We take the domain of the structure, this new element, we take this column closure, and that's M of P. Okay. And for this, uh, this is something that's easy to check, that we have this version of Wash lemma, that something is true about this new element, and it's an element that generates the whole new model over M, something is true, and for all formulas with parameters from the ground model, if and only if we already put the corresponding formula in, in the type. Okay, so that's a very useful feature, and that gives you control, that you, there are various ways of constructing those nested sequences, so at the end we get something that, that we can sort of test by, by using the wash lemma and see what are the properties of this extent of this extension that we have constructed. Okay, so so two examples. So this can be used to build minimal extensions. And minimal extensions here, like you know, since this is going to be about lattices, so two, the bold phase two is the two element lattice, the least element of the lattice, and the and the top, the bottom and the top of the lattice. And by Geisman splitting theorem, because you can always split mixed extension into two steps. If you have um, an elementary extension uh, that's uh, you know, the, the lattice, the interstructure lattice is just these two, bottom and top, it must be either end extension or cofinder extension. So, so first about the end extensions. So, so here is the lemma. You know, so, so always at some point there there will have to be some basic combinatorics done, and this is simple. This is a simple lemma that says if you have an unbounded definable set. Then for each scholar term, for and you can read it for each defi m definable function, uh, there is a definable um, subset of the set that's also unbounded, and on which the term, the function defined by this term is either constant or it's one to one. And this is really very simple. Uh, def you define the set y by induction by using the assumption that x is unbounded. So this is some very basic thing about infinity in uh, on unboundedness in non-standard models of PA. So we have this lemma that's simple to prove. And once we have this lemma, uh, okay, and once we have this lemma, we can prove that every countable model has an elementary extension such that the interstructure lattice is just the lattice of two, two element lattice. And how it's done? Well, by, by you know, applying the lemma, you know, doing the sort of, the, building this omega sequence of unbounded definable sets, such that every column term is either constant or one-to-one -one on one of those sets. And this forces the corresponding type to have this property that, that either, that if you, if you take this column closure of the element realizing the type, and if you look at any column term, either it would, uh, the value of it will be in the ground model, 
then when the term becomes constant on one of those Fn's, and if it's not one of those, then it has to be one-to-one -one on one of those uh, sets. So that allows you to define uh, another scholem term or another definable function that takes you from the T of X back to X. So, so the, the, the model generated over M by a single element, it's a, it's a minimal extension. Okay, and I, I put in I put in blue uh, the uh, important elements of the of the facts, the definitions, and 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 results. Because well, in this case, uh, this assumption that M is countable turned out to be not necessary. Uh, in a moment, I will I will talk about this is a theorem of Geithman. Now that actually every model has a minimal every model of PA has a minimal elementary end extension, but it uh, what one uses. Uh, a completely different technique to do that. I will I will go over this in, in a moment, but in the countable case, it's a, it's an actually easy kind of exercise in, in model theory of PA. Okay, so is this all clear? It should be. <laughs> all right, and now, but now what about minimal cofinal extensions? Well, it's, it's very similar, but now you need a different lemma. In the, the this nested sequence of the definable sets in the previous case was they were they were all unbounded, but now if you want to make make a cofinal extension, then you're adding a new element in between the old ones. So the type uh well cannot be the type that has unbounded sets in it, they have to be bounded. But the, the thing is that if you start with a, with a set that's large enough, but large enough in this case just means that it has uh, some um uh, non-standard cardinality where you select any non-standard element of the model and and the fact is true not for non-standard elements is true it is true for any a that um, if you start with a definable set of cardinality a then you can define the subset of of cardinality essentially is the square root of of a on which uh, a given term is either constant or one-to-one. -one. So this is a kind of simple combinatorics of finite sets. Now, now you're doing the PA stuff, and um, that's something that's that's a fact about natural numbers. And then using a similar construction as before, you prove that every countable non-standard model M has an elementary extension such that in the structure lattice has exactly two elements. And you know, as, as you know, you start with some non-standard. Uh, segment from zero to a minus one, and then you do this uh, construction and to make sure that all those sets, the only point is that you want all those sets xn to be non-empty, but here all of them will be of non-standard size. So there is some notion of largeness. In the previous case, the largeness was being unbounded. In this case, largeness just means being non-standard not non -standard size. And using the sequence, you, you construct a minimal extension. But here again, I put in blue that every countable, well, the model has to be non-standard because the standard model does not have any cofinal extensions. Uh, but this cannot be removed here from the full ver version of this of the result. It's still an open problem if every model of PA has a minimal cofinal extension. There is some non-trivial set theory that goes into trying to reconstruct this process uh, for a non-standard model. There is no problem with end extension, but there is a problem with cofinal extensions. There are some there are some partial results. Vika, who's not here, sadly today, uh, proved something about it in her PhD thesis. But it's an open problem. So this shows that th there is some difference. There is some tension between the end case and the, and the cofinal case. Okay, so these are just warm up warm up examples. Okay. Uh, so, so that's what I said. So uh, Geifman, and I will say more about Geifman, Geifman's paper, he he sort of removed this countability. You know, this is a very strong version of mcdowell specker theorem. mcdowell specker says that every model of PA has an elementary uh, end extension. And it, it already there is something non-trivial in the proof of this result, but Geifman strengthened it by saying, well, actually, every model of PA has an elementary end extension. That's minimal. And... Um, uh, and as I said before, you know, the problem is that uh, we don't know whether it uh, holds for every count, even every countable non-standard. Um, every kind of... Oh no! Uh, oh, oh, sorry. This is a typo. This is a clear typo. Every is we supposed to mean is supposed to mean every. The count countable is supposed to be a race here. So forget about countable here. Okay, this is what I said before. That for for arbitrary models, the problem is open. 
And this is just a remark from some later papers of Jim that for some reason, you, know, you would think that the final extension uh, might be harder because the combinatorics that, that you use there might be something, you know, you really need some kind of number theoretic principles involved. But there are some results that Jim proved, and I will talk about them probably next week, that show that actually in the sort of general lattice problem for countable models, at least, uh, uh, the, the final extensions are sometimes easier to construct than the corresponding uh, end extensions if they exist uh, for a given lattice. And you know, I, I just wanted to include it here that just to under so underscore this that, that there is this distinction uh, in these technologies for constructing cofinal extensions and end extensions. Okay, so let's see let's see what's happened. So now. So now to the, back to the general problem. I have to introduce some terminology. So, so uh, there yes. is the lattice. So, yes. So, uh, yeah. Um, I, I was going to interject. Uh, this is a so if you go back to your previous slide, this is a very um, non-trivial result. The theorem of Geifman. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to say more about it. Um, yes, I will. Okay. Uh, yeah. So he. So you know, I, I, I'll, I'll let you say more. Say more then, because it, you know he introduces uh, minimal types and all this, and um, it's a, it's it's a it's pretty kind of remarkable that that can be done, in, 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 and everything can be formalized within PA. Uh, all the combinatorics that you need, um, if you think about like what what you did, and what what you showed in the previous slide, that all of that can can be formalized within PA. Um, and uh, without having to sort of think about a particular um, model. That's right. That's right. And uh, I, I, I am planning to say something about it specifically. And in particular, it's even more remarkable. And it's a pity Haim is not here with us today because uh, he did all of this in 1965, where not much was was really done about, about all of this yet. And, but I will, I will, I will, I will, there will be some details that I want to mention. Okay, so now, so now back to to the lattice problem and some terminology. So so the the the, the lattice has the, um, the subset uh, that's in particular you, you look at uh, submodels that are finitely generated over the ground model M, or just finitely generated in the case of lattice of elementary substructures or N, and it's actually non-trivial fact that this is not a sub lattice. Sub -lattice, the, the the intersection of two um, finitely generated uh, models does not have to be finally generated. Uh, there are examples, and I will mention uh, one later, and perhaps Atar, because oh, I want to say that Atar will also give talks, uh, a talk or talks about this whole this whole subject a little bit later, and I will tell you what about, and maybe he will tell us uh, what, what about. But it is somewhat non-trivial to to come up with simple examples. And so, and once you um, realize, but you know, but finitely generated models are important because every submodel is a union of its finitely generated uh, submodels. So, so in a sense, the lattice, the whole lattice, is somehow determined by the behavior of finitely generated models. You just need to know how they behave under those uh, operations of unions and intersections. And so, there is a there is a lattice theoretic definition of a compact element. So here it is. So an element in a lattice is compact if whenever it's below some uh, meat of a set of uh, elements from the lattice, that's already below some finite, a meat of a finite subset of that set of elements. Join. So this is some kind of compactness uh, property. So that's why it's called compact. And it's, uh, it's actually straightforward to check that in the lattice of interstructures, the compact elements are exactly finitely generated over um, elementary submodels. So that's that's using column closures. It's a it's a simple thing to observe, uh, you know. And this is what I said that in the lattice, the full lattice, every um, every uh, elementary submodel is a union or supremum of all the sets of compact elements below it in the lattice. And uh, because we're talking about uh, models that are finite, uh, generated over M from a single element, that every compact element uh, can have at most cardinality of M many compact elements below it. So a complete lattice that has those properties, those two properties that are listed here, uh, is called uh, algebraic and specifically M plus 
algebraic and the M plus algebraic uh, relates to the cardinality of the set of compact elements below a given compact element. So this already shows that, and you know, certainly there are lattices there are not like that. So if one wants to uh, represent a lattice, uh, a general lattice as a lattice of, uh, as an interstructure lattice, it must have these uh, properties. It has to be M plus algebraic for some, for some M. And in particular, if you want it to be uh, of the form uh, lattice of elementary substructure or all elementary substructure, it has to be Aleph zero. Aleph one, it has to be Aleph one uh, algebraic because every compact element uh, has only countably many compact elements below it. Okay. So now this is, I, I want to mention something, you know, that those, those the, one, one shouldn't think, you know, this is something I, Mateusz, uh, where we gave us a talk uh, a few weeks ago about this problem uh, of complexity of finitely generated models of PA. And he was talking about finitely generated models are being particularly simple, but this, this, are some, this is the result that shows that there is nothing simple about you. You, you cannot really trifle with those finitely generated models because they are can be quite complicated so so here is the theorem and I, it's it's been known before but i don't think that it has ever been written in this form Somopa for those of you who don't know but i think all of you do know <laughs> it refers to uh, the book that jim and i wrote this is the um the structure of uh, models of arithmetic and there is a theorem there 2 11 12 that has every countable model has a super minimal elementary end extension so it means that, you know, by compactness, you can always extend model by, by, you know, by coding everything by a single element, but it's even in this very strong form that the whole model, you know, no matter how complicated your ground countable model is, you, you just add every element uh, with a single element and this column closure of the single element without any parameters from them already uh, codes the, the whole thing. And it happens for every element in the in the extension. So in particular, there is a simple corollary that you can have a finitely generated model so that the lattice of elementary substructures is of power continuum. You just take, for example, recursively saturated model has continued. And I will talk about recursively saturated models um, separately uh, next week. Uh, you know, they have the lattice of elementary substructure of recursively saturated models of power continuum. And then you take a super minimal elementary extension, so it's ex you extend the model to, so, to something that's finitely generated. Okay, and this is like an early application of, of, of this fact uh, that was somehow hidden in those, I think the proofs that Jeff Paris and Julian I proved this in two different ways, that, you know, by iterating, this is, I have a proof, so maybe we can take a look at the proof first, that you can start with an accountable model of PA and just iterate uh, making super minimal elementary end extensions or omega one times, and you take the union of this elementary chain, and then it, so all the models on the way, you know, you, the, the, so the whole model now is the union, it's an omega one like union of find or degenerated models, and uh, this lattice uh, of finitely generated models is uh, uh, exactly isomorphic to omega one with um, as, a, as an ordered set because. Because you know, sooner or later, every 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 model on the way is coded by a single element. So it's a very kind of nice, attractive early result in, in about about lattices of elementary substructures. Questions? Okay, let's move on. Okay, look. So now, so now, but th there is already much to say about finite lattices. Though. So um, I will talk about those finite lattices a little bit, and uh, Atar, I guess, also will continue. You know, so so, and in particular, you know, there are very similar finite lattices, and they behave very differently uh, with respect to the representations as uh, interstructure or or substructural lattices. So you know, so there is B two, which is also the same as uh, M two. This is the uh, uh, this is the Boolean algebra of all subsets of a two element set. Okay, you can think about the empty set, the whole set, the set made of an element B and uh, A, and set made of singleton B. And this is the la this is the Boolean algebra of, of subsets of a, of a set A B, and a very similar uh, lattice, except that you put one element in between, and you may and you request that A B C are uh, in independent. They don't. 
they are not uh, uh, related. So, so that's called, this is M3, and in general, uh, Mn will be the bottom and the top, and like this, uh, N many um, independent incomparable elements uh, in between. So those are Mn's. Okay, and we will, I, I will refer to them, and there are some very specific results about them, as you will see later. And there are two more lattices that will be of interest. There is the uh, Pentagon lattice, okay, that has this chain of, of models. Well, these are just lattices, and, and all that said that it was zero, followed by A, followed by B, followed by one, and on the side, and um, incomparable element C, okay, who's in between zero and one. And so again, so this is almost like uh, adding B2 and just putting sticking one element somewhere here, either sticking A here or sticking B here, and the hexagon, what looks like that. So you take the you take B2 and instead of uh, single elements, you add, you know, these a pair of, of elements or ordered this way. That's H. So this will be referred to as the hexagon. And what I think is very interesting. Um, and you know, for us, though for me, you know, I'm I'm you know I'm very much out of my depth here in this subject. I'm studying it. You know, there is everything about it is in Somopa in the book that Jim and I wrote. But there is there is there's chapter four there, and chapter four, you know, is uh, completely uh, like many other things in the book, completely due to Jim. And I'm still studying chapter four, and I still and there I still have some way to go to understand fully what's what's happening there. But part of the part, part of the motivation uh, to it is really to understand, you know, how how is it so that those different lattices, the lattices that look so similar to one another, behave so differently in, in with respect to this model theoretic questions about uh, uh, lattice representations. So uh, again, there will be something more specific about it later. So we have this uh, B two M three uh, N five uh, the pentagon and H. All right, so some lattices are distributive or on my list of those fine. And distributive means that the operations are distributive. They both uh, obey the distributivity law or there are various definitions and various equivalent characterizations. The one that's simple to state that the lattice is distributive if it's um, isomorphic to a sub-lattice of a Boolean, Boolean algebra of sets. Okay, so that's some kind of very general, you know, sort of you relate distributive lattices to, to Boolean algebras this way. Or there, there is a characterization, a beautiful characterization, that when a lattice is distributive, and it turns out that it's distributive, if and only if it has no sublattice that's isomorphic to either M3 and M5. I didn't say that, but M3 and M5 are not. One can check that. And, uh, and it turns out that these are the, the only obstacles. So, so, what, so what is really very comforting here, that the lattice problem is completely solved for uh, distributive lattices. And this comes from a paper of George Mills from 19, 1977. And this is really remarkable because Haim's paper is from 1976. And I, uh, I'm sure he sort of it caught a lot of attention. And Haim had all kinds of preliminary results and also including things about the Boolean algebras of subsets of, of, of any given set that can be that each each of those can be represented uh, as an interstructural lattice and, and many many related results. But very quickly, George Mills said, "I understood, I understand that was his PhD thesis." And and he wrote this paper. I I have the paper actually here with me. Substructural lattices of models of arithmetic, and it's from uh, 1977. And it's a massive paper. It's a difficult paper, uh, and it's already here maybe a little prematurely because it is based on an advanced generalization of the techniques that Geifman introduced in his 1976 paper. Okay, but, the, but the result is very elegant, that you know, for all distributive lattices, uh, the problem is solved. We don't, what about them? They have to be Aleph 1, uh, you know, to be, you know, we're talking about the, the conditions here. If you can represent the, the lattice as a, sub, a substructure lattice, a slatter of all substructures, then it means that for every model, you can construct an extension such that the interstructure lattice uh, also uh, represents the lattice. And you know, so for for number one, uh, it's obvious that it has to be Aleph one algebraic because this is what these are these models are. 
and uh, but um, Right. On, on, okay. Right. And so, so here I just repeat the the definition of what the of, of algebraicity means: that every element is a supremum of a set of compact elements, and below uh, every compact elements there are there are at most uh, countably many other compact elements. Okay. So in particular, it solves the problem. Uh, uh, it solves the problem for all finite distributive lattices because they are algebraic. There is nothing to to check. Okay, the, those conditions, the algebraicity only is a restriction in case of uh, infinite lattices, but all finite lattices are algebraic. Okay, so it's, it's a complete solution. So, and the, the problem is open, in, you know, we still don't know. And one of the most attractive problems, I think, like the Z problem, is that whether there is a finite lattice that cannot be represented as a substructure or interstructure lattice. Uh, but uh, the distributive case is. Closed questions. Oh, and also, is there something? Or maybe I'll, I'll I'll say it in a moment. This is about models of PA. But for those of you who know what PA star is, um, it all also apply to PA star, which is PA in any in any countable language. And I will say something about it in a moment too. Okay. So now, can I can I ask and I. So, I yeah. I don't know. Uh, since you have the Mills paper, uh, maybe maybe he says this. But if uh, if D is larger, if it's you know kappa plus algebraic for some cardinal kappa, and M is a model of PA of cardinality kappa, then does the the does the technique still work, or um, is it is it is it still true that there's an interstructure an elementary extension with that interstructure lattice? Well, no, this becomes localized to the cardinality of M because if you look at the equivalence of one and two, there is nothing here about the cardinality of M, but one and two are equivalent. Yes. Um... And for this, you need Aleph one algebraicity. Right, okay. but I'm, what I'm... Right, so, so, if, so if, if you started... Every, right, so, but if, if you don't have every in two... Yeah, if you say every M of cardinality kappa... Right. Right. No, no. So, no, I, I have my Mills's paper here, but there, I don't think there is an, I don't know if Jim knows. Um, if, if you're theoretically. I, I can't remember exactly the statement, but this one doesn't look quite right. <laughs> but. Um, so, what, what seems wrong? Um, uh, I have, I have Mills's and, paper here. Um, that M can be any, any cardinality. Let's see. Uh, no, you see, uh, this is three. What, what what I have here is verbatim theorem one point three in Mills. Right. Yeah, I know there is something here that you know, but I, that's exactly what what I, what I have here is exactly one in the introduction, one point three in Mills. I'm sorry, say that again. That I'm looking at the paper uh, here, and uh, what I have here is um, the theorem one point three in Mills exactly. So, so there is something about this for every, which in particular, you know, it has to include. The countable case, so that's why this Aleph one comes here, right? because if you if you have some some other things, right? Uh, oh, I see. The following are equivalent. That's right. Okay. Right. And so, if you want for every, you okay. have to do this for countable M. But, yeah. Okay. But there must that what Atar is asking how <laughs> whether it can be. Uh, uh, whether it can be localized to, to a given M, say the theory of, of an uncountable M, and then whether you can repeat that. I, I, you know, this is something to, I, I'll take a look if I can find something about it for the next time. And 
And I see now that Haim has joined us. Uh, Haim, have you joined us? Or are you there? Well, either he cannot hear us or we cannot hear him. But anyway, I see his. Uh, uh, Haim is muted. That's why he's not saying anything. Oh, he's muted? Yeah, oh, I see. He's muted. But uh, you can see his face. I can see. Well, how would you know that he's face? Well, it looks like <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, now we can see him in person. No, Haim, because I already said all kinds of good things about you that I possibly could, and, and you only joined now. <laughs> but I would maybe I will repeat some of them. Uh, don't, ne don't necessarily repeat them. Tell, tell me them afterwards. All right. We'll do that. No, actually, the time is now, because you see, this is here. The next slide is about your 1976 paper. And what, what I wanted to hear is to say here, I felt very nostalgic preparing the slides for this for this talk, because this brings me back to Warsaw uh, in 1980 and 1981. Uh, Victor Marek, who was my advisor, gave me your paper. Uh, this paper here, Models and Types of Peano Arithmetic. And this is 80 dense pages. And he says, oh, take this paper and give us a couple of talks about it. So my job was to give talks, you know, but I was still a graduate student and I was reading and reading and reading and learning and there is much there to learn. So I, I plowed through uh, chapters one, two and three and gave, gave talks about it. This is about end extensional types and minimal types. Yeah. And then there is something more advanced in, in the next chapter. And I never got to chapter five which I should have, but you know, this is 80 pages and chapter five is about lattices of elementary substructures. So I, I didn't I didn't really go into any details of that. And there is really much there, but you will, anyways, but I, I really, but it's a great paper. And it's, it was really some kind of a breakthrough in many, in many ways. So let, so what I'm about to do now is just to quickly go over what, what Atar uh, said that, you know, we should say that there is this whole technology now that, that Heim, uh, designed for constructing models of PA. So, but, but very, very quickly, you know, there's there's some uh, terminology. So we, we talk, you know, about completions of PA star, which for the results to hold, it can be any extension of an arithmetic in a countable language. George Mills, and and, and in the paper, uh, Haim asks whether these results can be generalized to uncountable languages as well. And George Mills answered that question too, by showing that not, that, that you can have models of PA star in, in, in the language that includes um, uncountably many function symbols, uh, such that the uh, some models of that theory do not even have elementary end extension. McDowell Specker wouldn't generalize even to, 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 that, to that setup, but for PA in any countable language, everything holds. So all these definitions uh, work in a, in a very general way, and it has been very useful in, in model theory of PA. So unbounded just means what, what, what it means, that if you have a theory, you have scholem terms of that theory, and the type must include uh, all the formulas that X is larger than every closed scholem term, every constant scholem term of the theory. So, so this applies to T that is uh, a theory, for example, of a, of, a, of a model. And in this case, it could be uncountable as well. Uh, it's just, it means that uh, you know, it's, it's a type with the parameters in the model and then the new element is above all the elements uh, of the model. And uh, one of the sort of exercises, uh, initial exercises that once you have an unbounded type of T, then it can be uh, extended to a co uh, consistent unboundable type, unbounded type of a theory of, of any given model of T. Okay, but what's more important now, then those the crucial definition of definable type. And this can be defined in many different ways. Uh, I This is more or less the definition from uh, 1970s, for Heim 1976 paper, that to, for type to be defined, definable, it must come with a, what's called a defining scheme, which means that for every formula in two parameters, well, if, if it's a type over a model, then uh, so if you define a complete type, so phi my, may have uh, some parameters, but here we don't want that because X is the variable of the type, it's a one type, and Y will stand for the variable that will uh, be used for parameters. And if you want to say that you would admit a formula with a given parameter to the type if and only if the defining scheme for that formula says that you know this parameter belongs to the type. So the type is this way definable in M already. 
Okay, and you know, and as I did, this extends to those very, the more general situations when you when you have completions of um, of uh, in PA star. So, and it turned out to be a crucial definition, and it's actually heavily used in in uh, in stability theory. But it was really taken from from uh, the uh, Hayim was the first to define the concept, and it turned out to be a very powerful concept. So, but there is more. So now. Uh, now we have again T is a fixed completion of PA or PA star, and a type is end extensional, and um, that uh, uh, it has this property that in any model of T uh, and any type, you know, the P is just a type of the theory, and you look at a model and you extend the type uh, to a, you know every type like can be extended to a consistent type by adding the parameters. So, and if you extend the type by the parameters, and then you construct, so now it becomes a complete type. So this is well-defined, M of Q. You take a column closure of an element realizing uh, the type over a model M. If every time you do it, you get an end extension. So end extensional type are types are the types that in this sense, always generate or produce uh, elementary end extension. And it's similar to minimality. So we can, we can uh, require that, uh, uh, you you want the type to produce uh, minimal extensions. Okay, so and to to state the main one of the main theorem of the paper, there is the, the relation of dependent dependence of types. So um, okay, I, again I moved too quickly. Okay, you have uh, types of the same theory. P depends on Q. If uh, Right. If P of X is really the type of this sort of, you, you think of X as an element of a model, and then you look at the value of this column term on this element. So P is the type of T of X. So it depends, the type of T of X certainly depends on X. So the, the formula phi of X is in the type, if this formula is in Q. So that means that P depends on Q. And uh, one of the uh, very useful theorems that not, not only uh, minimal types exist, but uh, in, in accountable language, you get continue many independent types. So this, uh, though, so that means that those minimal extensions, for example, when you start with a minimal model of the theory or prime model of the theory, you can, it, it has continue many minimal elementary end extensions that are all non-isomorphic to one another. Because if the, uh, the types are independent, those models uh, generated by single generators cannot be isomorphic. Okay, and um, this connects to the con the concept of a conservative extension. If you have a conservative ex a conservative extension has this property, you know, it's an elementary extension such that if you take any definable set uh, in the extension. Ah, okay. And again, uh, typo. I didn't. This this is a subset of n. You look at definable sets in the extension, and then at their intersections uh, with the ground model. And you know, I, I switched variables. This should be definable in m. So that this is a terrible slide. But anyway, what I want to say here, and I I, I hope you understand that it means you whatever is definable in you take a definable subset of n and its intersection with m. This intersection with M is definable in M. Okay, sorry about the definition here. So you know, and it's easy. Uh, it's a simple observation that conservative extensions must be end extensions, and there is a simple argument for that. Unless uh, somebody requests, I will skip it. Nobody requests the proof. There's a very simple proof. You can do it yourself. So, uh, so then a corollary of the existence of those minimal types is that every model of PA star in accountable language has a minimal conservative end extension. Okay, so now look, and uh, there, there is much more, you know, I'm, I don't know what's the, you know, I don't, don't see the number of my slide. I don't want to go for, for too long and I still have next week to, and, and there is material because some of the results I wanted to um, give proofs of, and this is something uh, that that we should spend a little time on, not much, but uh, just a simple example of how to construct elementary extensions with a prescribed uh, interstructure lattice. 
I think that Atar will also give this example, but uh, this this example will use uh, Jim's. You know, this is completely. I, I will not say much about what Jim did because much of what Jim did is is based on a very special uh, technique called CPP representations of um, of lattices. You know, this is uh, canonical partition properties. And much combinatorics is used there, and all kinds of very non-trivial constructions uh, are used to construct lattices with a prescribed lattice of interstructures. Uh, but uh, what Haim did, uh, the consequence of you know the, the sort of analysis of properties of end extensional types and definable types is that if you take any set, here my set is just three element set. But instead of this three element set, you can put any set I of any cardinality. And the theorem is that for every model M, every model M has an elementary end extension N, and it's a conservative extension, such that the lattice of interstructures is isomorphic to the Boolean algebra to the subset of the set I. So I wanted to have it here as, a, as, a, as an example of how this works when this set I is just a three element set. For two element set, we know what it is because it's a minimal, minimal extension. So, uh, so uh, should this be B three then? That's right. Mm -hmm. Can you have them the mm -hmm. Oh no 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 no. Let's see. No, no but this is. Right. Let me see what is it that I uh, what I what I want to do. Right. It's I, I wanted to do do two things. So this is this is correct. This is B two. So if you take um, if you take uh, the minimal type and you construct M of A and M of B followed or B of A, you will get the lattice the B two. Okay, but but here so so this but I also wanted to use this example to show to show more about what those definable types do and it will be and it will be about this uh, right so so my example n is not the model here but but this is sort of the picture when I have a, a minimal type and this is what happens when I just do these two extensions so typically it will be done by taking m of a first and m of b so this picture ends here. Okay, and then the single, you know, it's, a, it's a sophisticated graph here. I was very proud because I, I did it without any graphic software. This is just, I typed this example. So the single uh, hyphens here, lines, mean, so this is M of B. Okay, and the double lines means M of AC. And every time, each of those elements, okay, I, I just have these three elements and I add them one after another. I first add A, then I add B, and then I add C. And altogether, I have a model that's generated by a single element. This is the code for ABC. So this M of ABC is all of it from the beginning to the end. And I just want to say something about it just to show you how those things work. And also it follows from, from some conclusion later. So this will be representing B3 at the end. I will, should, should ch change the title, but... but um, uh, but what happens is this. Now, if you look at this, because the type is minimal, and it's all the beauty of minimal types and end extensional types, that they work very uniformly. So, so the, the, this isomorphism type of M of B is completely determined by M and the type of B. So now I look at M of B, and... Uh, one of the things that uh, one of the beauty of definable types is that if the type of A is definable and the type of B is definable, then the type of pair is definable and it follows almost immediately from the definition. So, so th this whole example here was to show you something about you now what, what is this type of AB here? So, so it is definable. And uh, the other thing is that because A, B, and C they um, they realize the same definable type, then the type of AB is the same as the type of AC. Okay, and this was, I wanted this example to show that, so this is a definable type, but this one is not end extensional. Why is it not end extensional? Because if you look at um, AC, 
uh, AC realizes the type and M of AC is not an extension of MB. Okay, clearly. Because uh, to, when what, if you have A and you add C, then you have, to, well, if you have AC, and then you have to add A to it and A is below B. So, so this AC is not an extension of MB and, uh, and that violates the definition of, it, of an end extensional type. So I'm not quite sure if I'm making myself clear. So look, so, right, so, so maybe I said one, I'll say it one again. I think this is a kind of instructive example and I like the picture, but let me tell you again, what, what is the picture of? Uh, the picture is, it's not really how to construct the sort of lattice representing this B2. Well, although it is, because it shows you that, you know, this is really, you can think of this A and B realize the minimal type. And now if you look at the lattice of interstructure between M and this M of A, B, it has only those two models uh, in the interstructure lattice and they are not related to one another. So when you do it, either M of B will be an end extension of M of A or M of A will be an end extension of A of B, depending on how you do, in which order you do. You, if you do M of A followed by M of B, A will be below B and you can do it vice versa. But this was, I wanted to show you this example to show that there is something delicate going on, that uh, that they are really very special types, those min, you know, end extensional and minimal type. Uh, Haim showed that uh, every uh, minimal type is end extensional, and then every end extensional type must be definable, but all those three categories of uh, types are distinct. And they are all used in various ways to construct um, elementary extensions with various properties. So I don't know if you, if does anyone have an example uh, a question about my example here? Nope. So just clarification about the picture. Mm -hmm. Did you mean to say M of A in the first one in the after M? Was that this... supposed to be M of A? Yeah. And no, then... no, no, but no, but this was supposed to because the, the here the idea is that you have oh. those double uh, lines. So M of AC, this is part of, uh, the, the, these two are the parts of M of AC, just to explain why M of AC is not an, and an, an, and then when you add B, you will not get uh, M of AC is not an end extension. So of M, of a, M of A would just be the first two parts. Right, so M of A would be just so the first two parts, right? And okay. then M of AB, you add the NAC and then M of A, B, C will be all of it. But but this was supposed to show where M of A, C sits and, and M of B is in between. Thank you. Right, and so here again, maybe I should have added B here as well. I mean, this is a way you can show that uh, you can get uh, the lattice there. Right. No, 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 not the one here, but but the lattice here. Yes. Right, right. But also, right. So, so this would be like I should then maybe without without causing uh, confusion here. Maybe this would be how to represent B three. But my 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 point was really to show that that you you have this minimal type and how to have types that are sort of uh, that are, that's still definable, but it's not even end extensional. And again, the only thing again that's missing that, that it should be B right here, okay? Because you have M of B, and I uh, I extend this model by adding a type, uh, and uh, an element realizing the type of AC, and it's not an end extension because I have to add because A is being added below, so it's not an end extension. So, but uh, I want this is not the result of Schmel. Schmel has a stronger result. Right. Oh, sure. No, no, no. The, 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 is, right, right. So this is coming up. Uh, I, that's right. That's right. So no, this is just an observation. So, so maybe, it's, also, okay. it's, an, it's a nice example to show that you can get something like that. But yeah. Schmel showed that you can do it always. Here, right. you just right, right. constructed, using my technique, you constructed this kind of thing. But right. Schmel's result is stronger. That's right. No, that's right. But this is so. I, I was. You, you see, I. So maybe I'll finish today with this slide because this is what you're talking about. 
Yeah. Okay, because those were your, you know, so so this was in in your paper, which is an immense paper, and there is, and much is proved. And but then you asked uh, those pertinent questions that, you know, how much can be done in in terms of just applying those definable types. Yeah. So so and this is this is actually Mills in his papers introduced this terminology, which is based on your question there or your conjectures, that mm -hmm. you you have a type of a theory and so it produces a lattice if for every model m of t. If you if you do this uh, canonical extension by uh, uh, adding a, an element realizing the type, you get something that's isomorphic to L, and this was confirmed in two ways, in two different ways. That Jim introduced the, the sort of special technique of building these models, finding that for any finite distributive lattice, so not only con you know reproving that every finite distributive lattice, proving that every finite distributive lattice uh, can be realized as a lattice of interstructures. But there is a one definable one type that produces it in this sense. So this is very general result that you can always do that. And Mills did, has this sort of at the end of his again massive paper that uh, extends this to uh, any distributive lattice, not just finite. That uh, that there is a definable type, and the extension is in parentheses because there are some extra conditions needed. And because th this is um, uh, which produces D and that uh, over, over NAM. And, uh, and the, uh, the equivalent condition is that, well, D has to be Aleph 1 algebraic because it has to be to produce means to produce it over every model. And uh, the uh, 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 join of all the elements of D is a compact element because at the end you have something that's generated over M by a single element. And to have an end extensional type, you avoid this, you know, this is essentially, I always wondered what this condition meant, but you avoid the situation that we have in this example of D3, that if you have two non-zero elements in the lattice, then their join is also non-zero. Which is not the case of this uh, of the type of AC. This is not the case uh, uh, of this uh, of this lattice here. This is saying that it's uh, atomless. Uh, the, end, the end extensional. I guess so. Right. No, but this is right. Right. Okay. Right, but this is a condition of having end extensional type. The, the other was sort of that the type somehow can be used to construct a, a, a uh, lattice. But the type of AB, you no, know, the type of A is minimal. So N is the same as the type of B, but the type of the pair is not even end extensional. And it, it certainly doesn't satisfy this condition here. Does it well? Anyway, I have to think about it more. <laughs> anyway, look. So, so I, let, let me tell you what I what I want to talk about next time because all of it. I, I and and Heim, before Heim uh, joined, I I have made this introduction that this is like an overview of what has been done. But as you can see, everything here is from about fifty years ago. <laughs> okay, and so I said at the beginning that uh, much has been done in the nineties and then you know the following years, and but most of the stuff was done by Jim. Uh, not all, but really most of it. And so the second uh, half of my, my talk, and, and all of this except for Mills' theorem. Mills' theorem is mentioned in, in some OPA, but uh, there is no proof because it's really kind of really curious, uh, very complicated construction using non-trivial combinatorics, uh, but very beautifully generalizing the results for, for distributed lattices. But there is much more, more to say, even in the case of uh, finite lattices, non-distributive. For the distributive lattice, the case is closed, and so and there are many variants of the of the main question, and there are open problem. And what I want to explain a little bit about why is it so that M sixteen, which is uh, the lattice with the bottom and top and sixteen uh, incomparable elements in between, is the simplest uh, finite lattice for which the uh, lattice problem is open. So I think that perhaps this is a good time. Also, looking at my at my watch here, it's a good time to stop. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Uh, let's let's thank our speaker. Thank you, Roman. Okay, thanks, Roman.
was good. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I I would like to apologize. I mean, I had a commitment and I couldn't uh, I I couldn't be at the beginning of the seminar. Uh, Rohit actually said that yeah. you are probably teaching. Oh, Rohit mentioned in the chat um, that yeah, Heim sent it up his apologies and has said he had an appointment. Um, okay. So he 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 conveyed uh, your apologies for that already. But thank you for joining. Um. Uh, are there any questions for? Yeah, I would. I would like to make a comment that ahead, Mills Mills theorem uh, extended Paris's result, and you didn't mention Paris there, but he all right for I, yeah no, no, for, no, no, uh, no. accountable models. Right, right. No, I, no, there is much that I didn't mention. Uh, you know, we had to make some selection. I, 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 I think we mentioned it in the. Um, in this uh, survey that we're writing. Okay. Right, so um, can you remind me the result that's that's about countable distributive lattices? Uh, no, Paris, uh, let me see, I'm looking at it now. Right, this is about Aleph zero, right. Right, so this is about that that every this Aleph one uh, compactly generated distributed yeah. lattice can be realized as a substructure lattice, yeah. but but not in the form that every model has an elementary extension. So this, this seems to about it. Well, at least this is this is the way uh, the way quotes uh, Mills quotes Paris. So it's a theorem about substructure lattices, but not interstructure. In the sense that not, I, I don't think Paris proved well, that. I every... think that um, it would show that every um, non-standard countable model has uh, an extension. Oh right, no, but this, this is by using PA star. Yes, um, applying this to PA star. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, it could be. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I, I... Mm hmm. Right. Look. So I I I I want to say that it will be very, now. Atar and I were trying to get Jim to tell us about those things, but I I understand very well why Jim doesn't want to do um, uh, anything about it because even preparing no my, my notes really you know it's like a tip of an iceberg. There, there is there is really much much behind these results and proofs, and I didn't even mention any combinatorics yet, and I will uh, I will not do it. Atar may. In, in his presentation, I'll, I'll I'll do somewhat of a tame version of some of the combinatorics, but you know I, I mentioned when you when you brought up um, the the result about countable models uh, having minimal uh, end extension that Geifman's work on that uh, you know and, and Heim is here now so so he he you know he, he might want to say something but Geifman, the work on that in in that paper the the it 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 it, do, it does it formalize all all that all those combinatorics that you were doing. So if you when you when you say something like I, I, any definable set has uh, and any definable skolem function, there's a definable infinite subset of it where it's one to one or constant. Uh, Heim built, essentially does that in 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 a formal way in PA so that for any formula phi there's a you know PA proves that there's this formula psi, psi that does you know what, what you want and then shows that you can use that to build um this the this minimal type and that's um that, that's a lot more that's a lot a lot harder than the stuff that I'm going to I'm going to say because I you know I'm, I'm going to kind of stick to count, countable models just so that we can kind of get our get our uh, a hold of of what the construction does um and also to the this is it is open for uncountable models which which uh finite lattices can be realized right i mean even uh, even for the um yeah i mean it, it, it's 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 open it, it, in 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 general right for for mm -hmm. for uncountable models so um because this one technique does use that, that jim introduced does use countability 
Mm -hmm. Right, and also about minimal types and end extensional types. There are, there are two things that I want to say. So in our book, uh, we have the whole chapter on, on minimal types and presentation there is uh, somewhat simplified from what's in the original Himes paper, but partly because uh, something that I don't remember exactly who observed this, uh, it could be some of us, could have been some of us, that minimal types are exactly what is called there in the book indiscernible types. And in discernible types, an unbounded type uh, such that uh, it sets of realizations in every model is an indiscernible set and all that indiscernible set. And once you prove that, many arguments uh, and many results of Heim become much easier to prove. They're a kind of a kind of a sort of shorter, shorter way to sort of minimal types can be can be characterized in, you know, I think we have a theorem that shows sort of lists about eight equivalent uh, forms of what it means to be to be minimal and some of them are used to prove theorems a little easier so so that's um, that, that there has been some progress since the, since the original paper and it, that, that's that's in the that's in the book and there was this other thing that I wanted to say uh, but let's uh, let me see but mm -hmm. but that uh, well, it uh, it escaped me now, so I will I will not say that. Maybe it will come back next week. Sure. So um, on that note, I'll again just mention that uh, Roman will be back next week, and we'll continue. Um, do you have is there, is there, do you want to give a quick blurb about what you what you'll uh, you know a quick preview about what you'll say or? Um... No, no, I I already did. I said okay. I would say everything that I didn't I didn't have a chance to say now, <laughs> and it's about a little bit about what Jim did, uh, you know, at the end of the twentieth century and and up to up to now, because there are variations of the basic questions that involve um, uh, the, uh, what what he called and uh, defined equivalence lattices and diversity. In it's, it's all about how to produce. Uh, particular elementary and extensions with a prescribed lattice, but those lattices can be differentiated more uh, based on what the models, in, it's not just what the lattice looks like, but what are the elements of the lattices in, the, in, in, in terms of how they relate to one another as substructures. Okay, great. So... And, and also I want to say something about, now this is all the question, given a lattice, L or distributive lattice T, uh, how to construct an elementary extension with such and such properties. But also I want to spend some time if uh, if there is enough on sort of like a reverse question. We have this whole uh, elaborate theory of countable recursively saturated models and they have uncountable lattices of elementary substructures. And I, it turns out that much can be said about properties of those particular lattices. So I want to say a little bit about that. So it won't be constructing lattices, but having a model already and studying the uh, one particular lattice based on it. Great. So uh, please come back for that. And uh, with that, let's, let's thank Roman again. Thank you. And thank I you. thank you for showing up. Thank you.